We are live. Oh, you almost got me picking my nose, you know. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, this is <laughs> new episode of Sif Temple. This is the trailer breakdown of Star Wars Rebels season four trailer number two that we've got a reaction to yeah. on the channel. So if um, you haven't seen that, make sure you see that. Make sure that. We are live. <laughs> It's Raven, Eugenius, John, and further the cyber nerds. Um, season four, so this is the last season of Rebels. Yeah. Uh, it's coming to an end, and according to Dave Filoni, uh, it, it's actually going to have an ending, unlike Clone Wars. So, um, very dark. I mean, we already kind of had a glimpse of that in the, in the past few seasons, I think. From season one all the way to the last season, it just got darker and darker. Do you know what's crazy? Yeah, is like we had a comment on our YouTube mm. saying, "This is a kid-friendly show." Blah blah blah, and I was like, "I know it's on Disney XD. This is not kid-friendly. <laughs> it's not. People get decapitated and blown up like every episode. Like, like don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. But um, what we're gonna do here today?" We're gonna run a trailer, we're gonna go through it, we're gonna pause, we're gonna rewind, we're gonna talk about some comments, we're gonna say what we think like more in depth, more in depth. now that we've had time to break it down. So Definitely. Um, without, um, without, without further ado. Wait, without further ado, I'm Joe on Further the Cyber Nerds. I'm Raven your GS. And now we're gonna press play on the trailer and get going. So the, like, the trailer, you can hit play. The trailer starts off in Love 4, like, get me. Ezra's, Ezra's hometown. Ezra! Um, let's pause yeah, let's right just... here, right here. Yeah, uh, it's <laughs> not even yeah. two seconds in. Right, and cool. let's let's pause right here. So, um, the first glimpse I get of this, uh, it takes me back to Anakin's. Why has everything got to go back to Anakin? But listen, it, it's just listen. He's so we so we 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 starting off with Ezra. <laughs> Ezra waking up, so it's, it's, it's pretty obvious he's having a nightmare. At the same time, we have Caden screaming his name, and he just wakes up from a nightmare. Okay, I don't think I don't actually think it's a nightmare. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, Caden, I mean, not Caden, Ezra's pretty strong in the force right mm. now. Um, and upon further research, mm. the voices that you kind of hear overlaying up, overlapping each other are voices that we've already heard. Yeah. from seasons one to three mm -hmm. so they're like they're reused sound bits so what i'm thinking of is he could just be thinking of the past and do you know what i'm saying he could be thinking of past events not necessarily a nightmare do you know what i'm saying it could so, be but the, the reason why it makes me think that is because we've as we've seen in the past that uh ezra uh has visions mm -hmm. so to me it's like the way he's waking up and that's why i i've taken that anakin side where he's like he's just woken up from yeah. it and he's just because he just had those visions so um maybe it could be the, the first guy actually to have those things and obviously it's nothing new that you know um jedis or, or sis have premonitions so. yeah i mean he's always been worried about his friends and stuff like yeah. that and that mirrors anakin always been worried about losing his loved ones as well but like I said, I, I just think it's him maybe, yeah, being worried, but about past events and where everything's leading up to, like where it's all building to, get me, so. Uh, moving on. Love the music Loth in this run, as well. Loth Cat, Loth Wolf Run. All right, yeah, I'm glad you pulled it right there. <laughs> yeah, because obviously when I first saw the trailer, I was like, yeah, I think this has got something to do with Ahsoka, blah, blah, blah. Now, mm -hmm. apparently, mm. apparently, Brian Broadwell on our YouTube channel, shout out to you, thanks for subscribing and leaving a comment. He, uh, he says that Dave Filoni already bunked the Ahsoka wolf theory because we've never seen Ahsoka die. Mm. We don't know what happened to her. Right. So, I'm going to just retract that, but I do have a different theory They've shown since season one mm -hmm. that Ezra's got a strong connection, connection with, with animals. animals. So I don't know, like, and I know this cat, the loft cat that you see. Mm. In fact, keep it rolling for a little bit. Keep it rolling. Okay. Keep rolling. And um, pause right here. This cat that we see here mm. has been 
in Rebel since yeah. episode one, yeah. day one. Just loafing around, in and out. So, I don't know if Ezra's parents were force sensitive and their force transferred into this cat that follows him around, or if Ezra's force is part of this cat, or if this is some sort of deeper meaning that Ezra being from low fall at some point may transcend into right. some sort of animal form or maybe he's just going to use these uh, these animals to help out later like you saying that now you saying that um isn't there a temple in low fall there i'm i want to say yeah there is i'm pretty I sure when, when when they go to find the the temple i'm pretty sure low fall and there is a cat there as well so mm -hmm. i'm not sure if everything is tied in but um, but yeah, like you said, this cat pops in and out, and obviously they didn't make nothing out of it until now, and that kind of always got me wondering, like, why are you always showing this cat? Like, even though it might get hit or something, mm -hmm. or it just gets caught up in the middle of something that's going on, but it's it's very interesting. Now, um, one thing um, I wanted to Ezra. Oh, Oops, let's go. I want to show you something. Wolf cat, wolf wolf. Right now, do you notice here? It's almost like chakra points. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So, um, definitely, that's something I, I didn't pay attention to. Obviously, when we was doing the reaction, it was, we were just getting hit, and I was obviously so overwhelmed with with all the stuff that when I saw that, I was like, wow, this is actually pretty deep. Because if you look at the the, the love cat, love rat, and then the the love wolf. It's actually pretty interesting. They have these pinpoints, mm -hmm. and that could be obviously like you know the the chakra of or the pinpoints of of, of the force. So um, is that something that you, you did you pick up? No, no, no. I definitely did pick it up. Do you know what I'm saying? But this is what this was what was part of my whole Ahs Ahsoka theory mm -hmm. that people have these points, but like they go through some sort of transformation or and transformed right. having the same points mm -hmm. just in a different form because you can see the person has the same amount of points as the wolf does but they're just taking different forms on and I just thought that was a like a representation of the force manifesting itself in a different in, way in a different, right. do you know what I'm saying so maybe like like I'm saying maybe it's not a soul look there's two people there maybe that's a um, um, maybe you should, Ezra's yeah. parents like yeah, could, we don't know if they were force sensitive or not we know that they fought for the rebellion or they were against the empire so who knows? So it seems like we're gonna get, uh, uh, we're gonna be tapping in a bit more into the whole theory, the whole uh, background of the Force. Do you know what? I want to because like I really enjoyed the Bendu episodes. But even if we take it back to Clone Wars, where we had the Mortis episodes with the father and the son and the daughter, mm -hmm. like they were some of the best episodes. Um, and even though like Anakin's mind got wiped back then, like. It showed so much foreshadowing of what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see that. If Ezra does survive season four, I'd love to see it foreshadow who well, he's going to be in the future run. and where we're going to bump into him again. All right, cool. That's what's up. All right, moving on. Wolf run. I actually didn't think at the beginning this was oh, Bendu. It's far from the stone. I mean, it could be. Beautiful Lucasfilm logo. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Status of the Imperial occupation. Keep going, keep going. Pause. There you go. See, see, we're synced. Someone said kid friendly. <laughs> Did he just get disintegrated into dust? Into dust, mate. Um, now, it's nothing new that we've seen uh, in temples where they've had massive battles, mm -hmm. and it's just. Um, bones and weapons left behind yeah. and clearly we're also going to get the glimpse of of um of this war as well mm -hmm. the thing is I, I wasn't i didn't want to stop you yet i wanted you to keep it rolling uh -huh. because there's a certain point i wanted to to get to talk about but we had to stop at the kid friendly the kid the kid <laughs> friendly it's stuff not kid all right let's keep going that's a trailer you know pause right here oh, so right, cool. it's if they're, they're, they're bending over yeah they're, so they've got they've bent the knee so basically it's got, this is all, see what I'm thinking of, they keep talking about how Mandalore's divided, Mandalore's divided. I think in this, they alluded to it in season three, Sabine is the person who can bring all of the Mandalorians back together and them all bending the knee to her with the dark saber, I think is signifying that they're gonna go to battle against the empire as a united force. And 
that is one thing that is going to be super crazy to see because obviously the Mandalorian race, like, are a race of warriors. Like, yeah. them going to beef against anyone is going to be savage, especially if they're united. Now, uh, with that, I think that's going to be, that might be mid season. They'll leave that to mid season. See, I, do you know what? Yeah. Because they can't just give, if they, imagine if they start off the season with that, then I don't know what else is going to come. See, now, this is my theory. Season four. Announced, announced final season. 100% mm -hmm. savagery all the way through the season. We're gonna get this Mandalorian stuff done early. First four episodes, Mandalores, all that stuff's done. And then the next four episodes, we're like, I, it's good, like, <laughs> there's not gonna be, we're not having filler episodes. See, we're not and, having, and, and, we're not having Chopper and, floating around in space and, episodes. And singing and season. singing, um, but that what you just said does make sense because we did have that that last season which was kind of a bit frustrating as well yeah but um if what you're saying is actually going to come true mate now brother listen I, listen i don't know i don't know i'm going to live on on a uh, weekly basis all i know is that season like if you go back to season five mm. of the clone wars mm. pure savagery no filler yeah do you know what i'm saying then you go to season six the lost tapes like that's even worse than season five. Like, and oh, for them to announce so far ahead that this is the last season, like, there's like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, now. Yeah, they're this now. They ain't got no time for fillers, no nothing. This going is gonna straight be straight in. This is gonna be. This is gonna be a serious season. Now, one thing I like about this frame, Ezra on the left hand side. We got to be the other. I don't want to go there. <laughs> I don't want to go there because the thing is, they had they. Not they've had their moment, but like, you know, when he was a bit younger mm. in the first two seasons, you know, they always showed him to kind of have a crush on her. I just want her to be a big, a strong warrior and I want him to go down the path of the dark side and I don't want them to be intertwined unless, I, no, nah, in fact, no. Nah. I just, I just don't want it. Like, let them just go separate ways. Like, not every male character and female character have to That's come together. Different. And because we're going to dig deeper into Kanan, and Hera, I definitely don't want a new, a new relationship blossoming. I want to focus on that. Usually, I'm not the guy for relationships in in certain things. But the Hera and Kanan thing has been like three years coming and they never like beat you up over it. So, I'm ready for that. The, the only reason why I I have, obviously, I've, I've mentioned this because... Um, what's her face? Ray. Ray. No, it's not them. No, I don't. No, I just. I don't think it's. Them. I don't think it's them cool. too. I mean, it, it could be Ezra, mm. just down the line somewhere. Right. But I just don't. Him and Sabine, she, her being the Mandalorian queen or princess, and then having a daughter getting left left on Jakku. It like it doesn't line up. Like someone, a Mandalorian, not letting that happen to that child. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm. I, but certain things is where the force comes in, and it's just. It, it just takes it where it needs to take and you have no control of it. it. It can, but I don't. I just don't want it to tie in. I want it, I want it to be separate. Let's go. Moving on. Prove your loyalty, not just to your family. Look, so of course, oh, so that's that's just pretty much the same kind of yeah. thing we saw, but I think that there was a specific shot of Sabine's family that, um, you know, that apparently she betrayed or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that's them all coming together. Just, just see different. Yeah, you can see her brother right there right. on the end closest to the screen and her, these are sh taken from like different you, places, but I think this shot with her, with the dark saber is from where everyone was bending the knee. But this second shot, you can tell like the different background and stuff mm -hmm. is probably her rallying her like, family to go. everybody to come here. Of Mandalore. If you continue to allow this war to be fought on the Empire's terms, you are going to lose. Put, see, let's, did, let's, let's pause on. Now nah, look, I'm so Sol happy Sol Guerrero is back, voiced by uh, um, Forrest Whitaker. Um, so I'm so happy he's back because in the last season, we got a bit of him, but hopefully we get a lot more. And I like that there, you're seeing the rift between him and Mon Mothma. Like he's talking to her and he's like, look, you ain't gonna get it done the way you've been trying to do it. You need to come onto my side. And I think that's gonna play a part into Ezra's conflict. Like, you know, Kanan and Hera, they're following the, re the the resistance or the rebel rules, blah, blah, blah. But like, if we just tap into something else and go a bit harder, we can get some real stuff done. Now, we're, with, with this scene, what, one, what I like about this scene is that we're tapping more um, outside than just this group mm -hmm. because 
Now this is titled, obviously this is just before Rogue One and having just read um, Gardens of the Wills, Saul Guerrero is actually someone um, wanted like number one. Mm -hmm. So and obviously having, um, uh, what's his face? Um, Blue's face guy, oh my goodness. Blue face? Blue face. Fraun. Fraun. <laughs> You man, racist! Man just said blue face. <laughs> you racist! Um, is it just shows how much like impact he's is having on this war, and then obviously later on as we're going to see that um, throughout this trailer, it's going to tie everything in, and it just shows that you've got this rebels team, you've got Saul Guerrero, and you also have Rogue One at the other end, and that's just beautiful. And that's just one of the things when I was watching the 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 when we was doing the trailer reaction. I wanted to say so much because I was like, oh, this is making so much sense because he's just tying up the dots. Mm -hmm. And this is where it makes sense when um, Dave Filoni says, this is going to be complete. And oh, this is just going to be so, so sick. And I can't wait to just see how they just tie everything, every single battle from different teams. Um, oh, it's just going to be too much. No, man, I, I really like that as well. Like, how, we're going to be able to see different angles of the, the same war, battle like, yeah different like what brings different people here to unite for the same cause you know what i'm saying but my only thing that um I'd, I'd say is bad about that is like we don't get to see enough from the empire but what i do think is mm -hmm. with battlefront 2 dropping and you being a bad guy and that gap that game spanning over 30 years that we might even get that part of the empire's um, yeah, but this is this is where being a Star Wars fan fan right now is just so so epic because you just get like bits from everywhere, and if you just obviously if you're into it and you just follow everything, then it just makes so much sense and you just get a glimpse of everything in different medias as well. Yeah, yeah, makes so sense. that's pretty cool. Let's go. Moving on. Let's keep rolling. We are not ready for open war. See, that's you see that. That's, like, the, that's the issue right there, like, uh, just like what we was talking about. Sol Guerrero is going to be like, we need to take the fight to them. Mon Moffa is going to be like, oh, you know, we've got to go slow down. And she was talking to Ezra and this is going to be this, this is going to be a big dispute between Ezra and he um, Kanan, who's going to be heavily influenced mm -hmm. by Hera. Right. Like, Hera's going to want to do it the, the rebel way. Kanan, um, Ezra's going to be like, we just need to go and get this done. And <laughs> Kanan, and, and this could... This could build a rift either between Hera and Kanan or between Kanan and Ezra, more likely because them two are at odds all the time anyway. Love seeing Death Troopers. Yeah, and let's keep rolling, man. Sick. What about Lothal? We promised my people support. We promised. You can see? Run. There's a huge complex there. Go do something that might actually matter. So, <laughs> cool. so right here, we've got... Um, this is one of Thrawn's projects that he's been <clears> talking about. Uh, the tie defender, the one mm -hmm. right in the middle. middle yeah. So yeah, it's good for me. Only reason I want to stop it real quick is just to say like, I'm glad that they're bringing in more new uh, ship designs and stuff like this. This ship's actually from like Legends. They've, it's been mentioned in canon, so it is canon. But this is like the first time we're actually really we're seeing, seeing it. it. So yeah, man, it's super cool design. Your tie defender is at risk. Krennic has been quite persuasive about his own project. Go Again, on, go on, go Krennic, on. Yeah, yeah. like that conflict, and this is why I love Krennic. Like, this is why I love Krennic so much. Like, is he's actually on their side, but it's still a problem. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's like one of these like it's you love to hate him. Yeah, man. <laughs> like you got ten line managers, and they're all you know they're all trying to get the promotion. Like yeah. everyone's going against everyone realistically. So I, I just like them tying it in. It's just a name drop. I it's don't just think, a name drop, yeah. but it just so much just means so much. I don't much. think we're gonna see Krennic here. I don't Krennic. think so either. That might be the only time you even hear or see about him, but that's enough. It's, just that's just to know need. yeah, Krennic, Krennic's out here. Exactly. Man, let's go. What about the Black Key and Admiral Thrawn? Are you confident your ship can get in and out undetected? We don't call it the ghost for nothing. Or is it? I don't, I don't, like, I, I think that, I don't really like that line. I think it's a bit cheesy, like, we don't call it the ghost for nothing, like, like, Hera. Yeah, but it, but Hera, we believe you, like, we know you're, <laughs> like, we know you're the nicest pilot out there, like, there it's calm, do you know It's what I'm pretty saying? much ghost, she's ghost. Yeah, there, yeah, like, yeah, do like, you know what I'm saying, like, I, I just pilot. feel like, I feel like, you know, sometimes when the show does stuff that's, like, really kiddie, like, mm. do you know what I'm saying? I feel like that was one of them, but, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's cool, man. Man loves the ghost, though. <laughs> Oh, got him! See, 
Captain, Captain Singular. All right, we all see right there. So this character, let me let me give credit where credit's due because I love I love our uh, I love our subscribers, man, because they be they be in the chat dropping us knowledge. So Darth the Spain uh, says that. Uh, this character's actually name is called Rook and he's voiced by Warwick. Uh, what's it? Warwick Cannon? Yeah, Warwick Cannon, yep. Um, and it's pulled straight from Legends, but it's great. Uh, and she's really excited to see him getting some action. So I think it's really cool. They've been doing it the whole time anyway, bringing Legends characters in. But I think it's really cool to see like this assassin who's going to be sent by Thrawn to go after Hera. Question to you, mm. why is Thrawn sending someone to go after Hera? See, I'm glad you asked that because now, to me, it just shows that Hera went from uh, an unknown rebel mm -hmm. to, oh, I'm top of the list now. Mm -hmm. So it could be now, it could be Sol Guerrero, mm -hmm. Hera might be next now because these <laughs> guys have been giving them trouble. This is the reason why they brought uh, Thrawn in in the first place. Yeah. Because they've been giving uh, these guys um, trouble for like for three seasons now mm. so clearly she's now known obviously they find out who she is she's one of uh, the leaders of of, of the rebel crew mm -hmm. but and why why capture not kill i think there's something going on there because listen it's a war a war is not is not just it's not a battle a battle you know you win within a day or two a war is is long so obviously information is, is value when we're talking about war. Mm -hmm. Think about it, they're fighting this war in different fronts. Obviously Hera being one of the, the forefront leaders of this team, she knows, obviously they started off being just a, a small rebel crew until they got recruited into, a, into a, a, a bigger a bigger scale of things. So now she doesn't even uh, get the orders now. Yeah. Now we, we've seen um, Ezra giving orders, give, uh, you know, being the leader of a mission. Mm -hmm. So she's not even in the missions like that. So now she's she's up there with the generals. Yeah. yeah so yeah. she has value information. You don't want to kill that. You want to extract that information and um, being able to use it against them. Ah, right, cool. And you know another thing. Sorry, Thrawn. What did Thrawn say before? We're gonna let them kill themselves. So it's like we're gonna use them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Fawn is a tactical person. He's not just come here and start killing people. He knows what he's doing. He has a plan and he's, you know, he wants to execute it. Oh, let's go. I love seeing a fight though. Getting the hands dirty. Ezra. It's not whether or not we fight. It's how we choose. Sorry, I have to pause here, but I'm really intrigued on what exactly is... Because uh, we've seen um, Ezra before mm -hmm. being taken over by Darth Maul. Mm -hmm. So is this another scenario where he's being taken, I don't know, by the Force? By, by the uh, Loth Wolf? What is it like? I'm really intrigued. And guys, if you know... Um, What's, if you have any ideas what's going on, please uh, drop a comment below because I'm really interested in seeing what's going on. Yeah, I, I, do you know what? Yeah, like it could be many. He could just be looking at something right now because obviously you see a reflection in his eye, but it does look like he is under some sort of mind control. Mm -hmm. But it could be a dream. Like there's so many, there's so many scenarios it could be. But it is really interesting to see like the way they cut that scene up with him walking into a wolf den and then three wolves coming out and then his eyes going like. I, these two scenes might not even be linked, I don't but, but it's, it's interesting to see, man. Ezra's is such an interesting temple? character, yeah. Where is he like? What is he looking at? I want to know. It's the fight that matters. I know, Kanan. Maybe we're choosing the wrong one. Oh, my word. This line, there was two lines in this thing that did to me the most. This line and the other one between uh, Hera and Kanan. Mm -hmm. So... He's having doubts now, how they're tackling this. He's been having doubts about everything though, yeah. the whole way. Right. He's always had doubts, do you know what I'm saying? <sighs> it could be like you mentioned before, like, um, because obviously <clears throat> you have, <clears throat> sorry, Hera's way of doing mm -hmm. things. He, he's looking at different ways as well. <clears throat> Are these visions um, playing a part of this, the way he's thinking? It has in the past, I feel, like I said, I think Ezra's going bad. I think the war, this battle is gonna start 
and he's gonna cross the boundary. Like, do you know what I'm saying? He's, I don't think he's gonna go all the way Darth Sidious, mm. but he's gonna cross the boundary that they have that he can't go back from. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, like, he's gonna go, like, it's not gonna be a grey Jedi thing. It's not gonna be like that. He's gonna be bad. Do you know what I'm saying? He's not gonna be, like, the most evilest person, but he's gonna do something that I don't think he's gonna be, like, able to come back from in that kind of group. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, everyone can be redeemed, but, like, I don't know. Like I said, I think him and... I, th I think Ezra's going to be the end of Canaan, man. I really I really think that. Oh, well, we've heard that line before. Uh, Anakin, you're going to be the death of me. We're choosing right, Anakin. Okay. I love, just love seeing that. Love seeing the, the space battle. When are you going to feel you've done enough for this rebellion? I guess I never really thought about it. So I guess you really never thought about us. See I, see, I love that line because that insinuates that they can't get together until they're ready to leave mm -hmm. the rebellion. And I guess that also says that they're never going to get together because Kanan is going to be dead before the end of the season. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry, but Kanan's going to die before the end of the season. So I think that's also why they put it in there to lead us to, mm. because that's something that we want so much right. for them two to get and together. Just take away from us. Yeah, but they're gonna snatch that away. That that was, that line was very powerful, man. It was very powerful. Right, moving on. Go, go. Oh, I'm moving. We will not stand down. We will not be broken by fear. Not the action, man. We are strong, united by our courage. Now is our time. I wish I could see you. You could always see me. All the paths are coming together, right? I'm just not sure if we're going to like where they lead. All the paths coming together, so. Um, there's like a triple and tundra to that. Like obviously they're talking about all the parts of that they've taken have come together, but that's really for like the fans like Rogue One, this, um, episode four, like all the parts of it, everything, everything that that's we've been really following thirty years is that's forty coming, years is coming is coming together. So I mean I, I, I really look proud. It's amazing this, man. This is the, the, the beauty of Rebels because like you said, thirty, forty years and now we're getting almost the push of what started everything because we we came in 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 the middle of it mm -hmm. and now we've given the chance to look at it from pretty much the well the beginning of the of this war so yeah. um man it's just it's so deep and i'm I, one of the things i'm um like i said before i hate trailers like this because it's not explosive but it has so much value so many, into it. Like, it too many questions come Too out. many it's questions, too many layers. What's going on? And I just completely hate but this is what Star Wars is known for. Mm -hmm. Rav, <laughs> that's the trailer, man. That's the breakdown. <laughs> that is, man, uh, I, I don't know how many times I've watched this trailer and it's just, it's too much. Like, I literally, I'm overwhelmed by it because it's just so many things. And obviously, and I think I'm even more overwhelmed now because obviously reading the books is just like you just get so much more deep into it. Like it's nuts. Yeah, it adds way more layers to it, man. <sighs> Guys, we've come to an end of our breakdown. Once again, after watching this trailer for like, I don't know, maybe fifty times or something, it still gets to me. And yeah, Joe. Guys, look. <laughs> That's what we saw. What we really want to know, what you saw. Jump in the comment section below. Let us know if you agree with our theories, if you disagree with our theories, if you hate this trailer, if you love this trailer. And let us know what your expectations for Star Wars Rebel Season 4 is. Definitely, that's going to drop October 17th. I'm Joe, one further the Cyber Nerds. And I'm Raven, your GS. This has been an episode of 4... Uh, oh, oh, of Sith. <laughs> this has been an episode of Sith. Told you, it gets to you. <laughs> It's been an episode of Sith Temple. Guys, before you leave, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you definitely turn on the notifications so you can get every episode of Sith Temple as soon as possible. See you on the next one.